So folks, we're continuing our discussion in this overview of slope. We just finished our first video on the average rate of change. And now I want to look at uh, specifically computing the slope um, of a line. And there's going to be a little bit of a circular definition here, so just bear with me. But um, let's take this line here and let's go ahead and plot two separate points on it. Here we'll go ahead and put this point right here and this point right here. And let's give this one the coordinates. We're going to give it abstract coordinates here. So we could call it, don't write this down, we could call this 1, 3, but we don't. We want to be a little more abstract here so we can build a formula that works in lots of cases. So we're going to go ahead and label this as the just abstract x coordinate x1 and then its corresponding y coordinate y1. And so then over here, continuing on with that numbering system, we'll call these the coordinates x2, comma y2. Great. So now we want to think about how we can talk about the steepness of this line. Notice that if I were to give you a steeper line, maybe a line uh, that looks like so, if I had picked these, if I had picked two coordinates, notice that there's a less of a distance between those x coordinates for some significant rise in the corresponding y coordinates. So we see that if I change by just a little bit in the x direction, I change by quite a lot in the y direction. And we'd say we'd want to say that this line right here has a steeper slope than this line. And that maybe motivates this definition that you've seen before. So the definition uh, of the slope of a line is to say that the slope of a line, which we should, usually we'll denote as m, and it's a ratio. It's not just that the x-coordinates change by a little bit or just that the y-coordinates change by a lot, but it's the ratio of how the y-coordinates change to a change in the x-coordinates. So that's why people like to say that it's the ratio of rise over run. And we can think of that as a change in the y-coordinates over a change in the x-coordinates. So this delta here, delta is read as change in. And that's what we were saying here, right? For this line right here, we would change a certain amount. If we were to look at the, uh, here's my x1 coordinate, and here's my x2 coordinate, and here would be the y1 coordinate, and here would be the y2 coordinate, we would see that for a given change in the x coordinates, we're seeing a, a change in the y coordinates, and we want to somehow capture the steepness of this line, the steepness of the slope, and so the best way to think about that is in terms of a ratio. Ratio, remembering, remember, meaning division. So we've set that up as the ratio of rise to run. And so let's go ahead and actually compute this. Well, to, to measure the change, you take uh, the former minus the latter. You take the current minus the previous. So when we want to talk about the change in y, we're going to take y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Okay. And so what I'm talking about is we're going to compute this difference right here. We're going to ask the question, how far is it from x1 to x2? And to do that, if I want to ask what's this, what's this distance right here from x1 to x2, what we're going to do is we're going to take the x2 value and subtract from it the x1 value. Do this, doing the same thing for y, if we want to ask how are the y coordinates changing, we're going to take the one of the y coordinates and subtract the other. Now I've set this up in the sense of like, this point is to the right of this point, and for change, we're taking the, uh, the second point that I listed minus the first for this coordinate. These, this formula is actually built so it could be done interchangeably, so you don't have to worry about which point do I call x1, y1, and which point do I call x2, y2. I just have to be consistent in the way I label things, and we'll see that in a moment. So continuing on, we can go give that slope formula m is equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. But I want to add something here. There is something when I first put these points on the line that I said, and that is I'm putting on two distinct points on the line. And for a non-vertical line, notice that two points are distinct as long as they don't have the same x coordinates. And you can see that built in the slope formula. This slope formula is not always defined. Why? Because we're doing that problematic operation of division, and we have to ensure that we're not dividing by a zero. So here we need to add with x1 not equal to x2. Okay? 
if x1 equals x2, we say the slope is undefined. Let's go ahead and continue. So uh, for any non-vertical line, that means we can actually define what we mean by slope. And any non-vertical line can be written in this form right here, which you may remember as y equals mx plus b form. Or it's also called the slope-intercept form. And in one of the other pre-works about lines, we've already discussed various forms of a line besides slope-intercept. And we're going to highlight that in the next pre-work video about lines. But for right now, I just want to point out that uh, we've got this one way of writing non-vertical lines. So my hope is that you see some parallels between what we started off doing in the first video of this pre-work and what we're doing right now. And that is we started off by talking about the linear function ax plus b. And you should see the connection between that and the slope-intercept form of a line. What's a little bit confusing is I would call this a linear equation of two variables. We think of x and y as just two variables. We don't assign some sort of cause and effect relationship to them. But as soon as I assign a cause and effect relationship, meaning I think of x as being the input and f of x or y as being the output, then I would write, then I would think about it as a linear function of the independent variable x. Not a big distinction, folks, but I'm just pointing that out. This is a linear equation of two variables. This is a linear function of one variable. And you'll notice that we can compute the slope of the line through this formula right here, like we just looked at. And you should see a connection between computing the slope of a line of a linear equation and finding the average rate of change. And this would actually hold for any function. So this holds for any function, including that quadratic that we were looking at in the first video. OK, so let's go ahead and give some special slopes now. Okay. If you have a line like, that looks like this, we're going to say that the line has zero slope. And if you have a line that looks like x equals c, x is equal to a fixed constant, we're going to say that the slope is undefined. Um, let's go ahead and just build a little of intuition with this. I know you've worked with lines before, so I feel like I can say a few of these things a little bit more concretely or a little bit more um, concisely. And let's just draw a, a few different lines here. Okay. Um, if I drew this, say this line right here, we would say that this line has positive slope. And the way we think about this is as I go, from left to right. And in math, we usually think of moving from left to right. As I move from left to right, my y values are increasing. And so we would say that that has positive slope. So if I have a line that looks like this, in this case, we would say that this line has negative slope. Now, I meant this just to be a, a foundation. My guess is you probably knew both of these interpretations. But where I see people make mistakes all the time then is when we start talking about vertical lines and horizontal lines and they confuse the two and they confuse how we label their slopes. So if this slope is a positive number like maybe one or seven or 10 and this slope is a negative number like minus one half or minus two, well, in between those two lines, we could sketch a line where if this slope is positive, this slope is negative, how would you interpret this slope? We would say here, m equals zero. Okay, so this has zero slope. And what type of line is this? This is a line that looks like y equals c. It's a horizontal line. In fact, let me just add this, that this is a horizontal line. And if I draw a line now that looks like this, this would be a line that looks like x equals c. This is a vertical line. And all of that is kind of, you know, I, I expect you to, you've seen that before, but what I want to emphasize is what do we say the slope of a vertical line is, and we say that the slope is undefined. And I'll just point out that if we go back to our slope formula, we're not allowed to have the two x coordinates be the same to use that slope formula. But notice if I took two points 
on a vertical line, they would have the same x coordinates. And so that's why we said, if the two x coordinates are the same, we say the slope is undefined. And that literally means that this slope equation, or the slope formula is undefined, as well as just how we opt to, we choose to describe the slope of a vertical line. Okay, we're getting close to being done with the content and we'll work on some problems. Before we do that though, I have two more things to tell, us, tell you. And that is, let's say we've got two different non-vertical lines. I've got this non-vertical line and this non-vertical line. And the distinction is, is each one has its own slope. They may be the same, they may be different. We're gonna say that these two lines, L1 and L2, are parallel if the two slopes are the same, that is if m1 equals m2. So if this number, say we're a three being multiplied to x, and this number were a three being multiplied to x, then we would say these two lines are parallel. Notice the two lines are parallel if they have the same slope, if their m value is the same in each case. We're gonna say that two lines are perpendicular if Careful, what am I doing with these two slopes? I'm multiplying them together and getting the number negative one. So if the product of their two slopes comes out to be the number negative one, then we're gonna say that the two lines are perpendicular to each other. Most students don't remember perpendicular this way, but notice if I were to solve this equation for one of the two slopes, for example, if I solved it for m1, I'd get m1 is equal to negative one over m2, and that is where students remember the phrase that two lines are perpendicular if their slopes are what they say as negative reciprocals. Two lines are perpendicular if their slopes are negative reciprocals of one another. And we'll look at some examples of that on the next page. But I do want to, I think it's important, especially as you go further along with math, to have the true definition of perpendicular. And what we mean that when we say two lines are perpendicular is that we mean that the product of their slopes is negative one. So just one last thing to clean this up. Two distinct vertical lines are said to be parallel to each other and two uh, lines are, uh, all vertical lines are perpendicular to all horizontal lines. All right, in the next video, we're gonna actually work a handful of problems. So I'll see you there.